Welcome back. An elementary school in St. John was locked down last Wednesday when a boy was found with what we now know to be a toy pellet gun. Liz Dale is with us and she has more on the story. Liz, can you give us some details about what happened at the school? Hazen White St. Francis School in St. John was locked down for most of the afternoon on Wednesday. The 11-year-old boy who was seen with the gun was said to have been behind the school waving it around. Teachers immediately ushered the children inside and called the police. One teacher went outside and took the gun. Police then took the boy into custody. They are still continuing with their investigation. So what will this mean for school safety? Well, what's interesting about the new year is that many schools in St. John are updating their policies on safety to include the use of intercoms and cameras. This is supposed to help with intruders in the school. But I spoke to one teacher on the west side of St. John and she said these safety precautions won't help with incidents like this in the future. Some people are worried that this incident was blown out of proportion. Is there any cause for concern here? For this kind of incident, you'll have people on both sides. For the teacher that I spoke with, she said it didn't matter that it was a toy gun, it was still a gun. She said you don't mess around with things like that. Superintendent of School District 8, Susan Tipper, said the students know the rules. And as for safety in the schools, teachers will continue to take every precaution they can. Well, it sounds like this is definitely something to stay tuned to. Thanks, Liz. Cold weather got you down? Our own Matt Robertson says take a page from his book and toughen up. You know what really grinds my gears? People who overreact about the weather. It's not that cold outside, so what? It's minus 30, I'm in shorts, okay? When I lived in Alaska, these are like sunbathing days. It's not a big deal at all. You go bundle up and whatever, complain about the cold, I'm going to wear my shorts. All right, and that's what really grinds my gears. That was New Brunswick sports legend Matt Robertson. Students around Fredericton have more to worry about these days than just their studies. Finding a parking spot on campus can be difficult for many St. Thomas students. With the winter weather adding mounds of snow to the mix, it can become almost impossible. Third year St. Thomas University student Tammy Murray isn't happy with the situation. Um, you know, if you're you pretty much have to get here really early in the morning in order to get a spot, otherwise you're sitting in the queue at, you know, your butt's hanging out on, on the street there and, and people, you know, are trying to get past you and such, but it's that or park over in the Aitken Center and this time of year nobody really wants to walk that far to... $75 can seem like a lot of money to pay for a spot you might not even get. Don't buy the parking pass though, and you may end up paying a $10 fine the odd time you do manage to find a space. Fredericton Police recently issued a warning telling people to stay off the St. John River. This came after reports of a snowmobiler trying to cross the less than frozen body of water. Tammy Murray is at the riverbank and has an update on the situation. Tammy? Well, Chris and Jane, with all of the cold weather, you might expect the St. John River to be frozen solid, but I've talked to a number of people today who say quite the opposite is true. In the Fredericton area, the St. John River is affected by the currents from the Mactaquag Dam. The water released from the dam actually erodes under the surface of the ice, making weak spots, and in some cases, the river is open in places all winter long. Now, I spoke with Constable Ralph Curry from the Fredericton Police Department, and he said he recalls stories of when the river used to be the central gathering place for recreation in the winter. He said you could even drive a car on the ice. That's how thick it would get. But he also said that was before the dam was built and those currents became in existence. Um, he said now he would never venture out on the ice. Um, I spoke with uh, Larry Gulliver from the Oromacto uh, Snowmobile Club, and he agreed that river crossings were dangerous. Uh, he said they encouraged their members to stay on the groomed trails that the club maintains, and uh, river crossings should be avoided at all possible. He said even in Oromacto, um, where the river isn't affected by the currents, he said they have the bay, uh, tides from the Bay of Fundy to contend with, which can make the river weak in spots, and of course you wouldn't know that until you were on top of it. So, coincidentally, it's it's uh, International um, Snowmobile Safety Week, and I spoke with Ross Antworth, who's with the New Brunswick Federation of Snowmobile Clubs, and uh, he said that the message they try to get out to their members is that um, the riders make the sports safe, and so it's up to them to use good judgment, which does not include river crossing, does not include drugs or alcohol, 
um, because those can also impair your judgment. Now, Constable Curry said that uh, there's always a couple of daredevils every winter that insist on putting themselves and uh, the rescue crews at risk. And in fact, he said he saw fresh tracks on the river on the north side just yesterday. And uh, as I look out on the river, it looks like they could be tracks, but I'm not going out there to see. Back to you guys. For many people, Israel's recent attacks on Gaza have become more frustrating. Its leaders say that Israel has the right to defend itself, but this message was ignored by protesters who gathered recently in Fredericton. More than 150 protesters gathered at City Hall waving Palestinian flags. Many carried graphic signs depicting victims in Gaza. Dozens came from other provinces to denounce Israel's military operation in Gaza City. We want the whole world to understand that the Palestinians have the right to live in peace in their own land. For many years our leaders didn't pay any attention to them. May God forgive who caused all of this. We can only pray for them. But Israel says the invasion of Gaza is a response to the continuous rocket attacks by Hamas militants. So far, international calls for a ceasefire have failed, and Israel's military troops and tanks remain in Gaza. A UNB student is getting ready for the trip of a lifetime. Owen Scott leaves in February to go volunteer in Africa with Engineers Without Borders. Melissa Russler has the story. Hey, check it out. I got a Bose iPod dock for Christmas. For Christmas, I got this purse, this Partini game, and these slippers. I got this for Christmas, yeah! Owen Scott breaks the mold when it comes to college students around Christmas time. Instead of asking for games and gift certificates, Owen asks his friends and family to donate to a worthy cause, Engineers Without Borders, EWB for short. EWB is a nonprofit organization that aims to promote human development through technology in some of the world's poorest communities. Owen is traveling overseas to Malawi, Africa with this organization. Thanks to donations generated through his website, Owen is on his way on March 1st. This will be Owen's second trip overseas and he remains modest about his role in improving the world. I'm honored to be part of it. Most of the volunteers I met are up there in terms of the list of people I look up to, like just some of the most amazing people I've met in my life and people I've been looking up to for years. So to sort of start to become part of that culture, it's really exciting. Laura Simmons is the president of Fredericton's chapter of Engineers Without Borders. She feels inspired by Owen's selfless actions and is taking similar actions of her own. My family hasn't done Christmas gifts since I was really little. We've always got to choose the charity of our choice and then that was our Christmas gift, is giving to the charity we chose. So this year, like Owen, I chose to do the Gift of Opportunity and my family donated to it. Both Laura and Owen are taking part in the Gift of Opportunity campaign. This is a website used by EWB to raise money, which in turn expands their programs. It also helps people like Owen with financial support throughout his travels. This way, Owen will be able to focus on his volunteer work. Among other things, he will be water mapping and teaching computer skills. Even though one person can't save the world, it doesn't stop Owen from contributing to change. Although Owen has already surpassed his goal of $1,000, he's not leaving till February and there's still lots of time to give. If you'd wish to do so, you can visit his website, giftofopportunity.ca slash Owen, and donate to his cause. For Stu Journalism, I'm Melissa Russworm in Fredericton. That's all for this week. Remember that you can catch all the stories from this week's episode at www.stubasementtapes.wordpress.com. And don't forget, we'll be back next week with a whole new episode of Stu Basement Tapes.